Hey guys, it is Sheridan back with another Marketing Mondays. This Monday I'm doing a little different. If you haven't noticed, I'm a little more casual, a little more laid back because today we're going to talk business, but we're going to talk life too, right? So something I actually have had on my list to talk about for a long time, but it's now I feel it's a little more personal to talk about and I can speak to it more, I guess, is guarding your ideas and your goals, right? So before we get into it, for those who don't know, my name is Sheridan LeBay. I'm the owner of House of Untamed, where I host the brands or house the brands, Untamed Marketing, Untamed Nights, Untamed Lingerie. So I do these Marketing Monday videos, giving you all tips and tricks on launching your business, marketing your business, and growing your brand. So today I'm going to talk about an important part of growing your brand, grant your ugh, growing your brand and your business is guarding your ideas, like guarding your ideas and really trusting yourself and your intuition when you're launching your business. And so for me, just getting into it, I feel like it's really important to just guard your ideas because for a variety of reasons. So the first reason is I feel like a lot of us, like we doubt ourselves and because we doubt ourselves, we feel like we have to seek validation from other people in their ideas. This like blind right here is like bothering me. So I'm gonna put this here because one of the blinds is like being stupid. But I feel like, now that's bothering me. <laughs> I feel like we share, I, we're quick to like, social media has really made it to where we're so quick to like, go put all of our ideas on the internet. We're like, oh my God, this, oh my God, I think I'm gonna launch this. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And the opposite optimist in me is like, that's great, like, that's awesome. You know, the internet, people on the internet can be super supportive, but it's also a lot of people on the internet that are not. There are people who are out there who don't wish you well, who you'd probably be surprised who they are. There are people who are literally lurking and seeing the ideas that people come up with and taking them and running with them. And they're the naysayers. And I think those are all three people, all three types of people to avoid. And the best way to avoid those type of people are guarding our thoughts and our ideas. And so it's just so important because when you are cultivating something, whether it's a business or a relationship or a personal goal, we really have to be mindful of who we share those ideas with. Like that goes for friends, family, the internet, whoever. We really have to be mindful because usually when we're getting our ideas down, we are still building momentum for them, right? So think about an idea. Think about you want to start a tobacco line, a weed paper line, whatever, the thing that people like roll weed in, whatever. And you're up one night or you're up early in the morning after doing, you know, some yoga or whatever, and you're just like, I think I'm gonna start a papers line, right? That's all you have. All you have is an idea. And you're so excited, so you go tell your girlfriend, you go tell your dad, you go tell social media, and you're still getting that momentum down. So think of it, think of momentum as like a snowball. Think of it as a ball of tape. Your idea is the ball of tape, right? And you have this ball of tape before, before anybody else adds their ideas to it. It's just the tape. That's it. This tape, ball of tape. And you start, so we'll do two different routes. So the first route is you wait to tell people till you've built the ball of tape up. So you start with a small ball of tape, you research some ideas that add to the tape. You research, you know, price points. You come up with the design. You marinate on the idea. You're writing ideas. You're, re you're doing so much research and 
building this idea to where it turns into a huge ball of tape. And on that tape is nothing but positive feedback, positive thoughts, helpful feedback, helpful thoughts, etc. That's the perfect world, right? In the normal world, we have this ball of tape and before the tape can be covered with our own ideas, our own thoughts, our own positive feedback, we go and we walk around with this ball of tape in our hand and we go tell our mom, we go tell our roommate, we go tell Twitter, we go tell our coworkers, hey, I have this great idea, take a look at it, it's a ball of tape. Now, some people may see that idea and they're like, oh my God, that's great. So you have a stick, imagine a sticky note being added to that tape, a pink sticky note. So pink is gonna be good and we're gonna make red bad, I guess. I think those two. So we're gonna say green is good, red is bad. So they add a green sticky note. You go talk to your partner at the gym and they're like, oh, my friend tried to do the same thing you're doing and it didn't work. Red sticky note. You go talk to your parents and they're like, why would you sell papers? Why would you sell weed related products? Red sticky note, two red sticky notes, two people. And so you're doing this, right? All the while, this ball is this small, right? The ball is this small. So because the ball already was not big because you didn't build up momentum to make that ball bigger, the idea is already so small and, and un, underdeveloped that it's easier for negative opinions to weigh that ball down. And that's how we should view our ideas. I think that all of us, we get so, I do it. I get so excited, I wake up, I'm like, oh my God, I have this epiphany. I gotta tell my friends. Oh my God, I have this idea. I gotta tell my mom. And we don't give the idea enough time to build a foundation before we start trying to add on everybody's bricks to our house. So I think, I guess that's another example is think of it like your idea is a house or it could be a house and you have a foundation, you build, first of all, you haven't built the foundation. You have the plot of land. You know you wanna build a house, you have the plot of land and you're like, okay, I'm going to build this house on this land. I know what I want the house to look like. You don't even know what you want the house to look like. You just know you want to build a house. Then, before you can even get the paperwork done, the foundation done, everybody's coming in like, you need red brick. You need a big backyard. You need a swimming pool. You need this, you need that. And before you can even articulate your own ideas and formulate your own plans, everybody's tossing in what they want for you, what they know from their experience or what they know from somebody else's experience, now they're projecting that onto you. So before you could even build your dream house, you've already been told, oh, it's not gonna work. You've already been given five other counter ideas. You have interior selections for the house and the foundation's not even built. And it's so important for us to guard those ideas because I don't know the religious beliefs of everyone that's watching, so I'll keep this kind of general, but I believe in energy, I believe in God, I believe in the universe, I believe in all those things, right? And I believe that God gives you a vision that doesn't mean he's giving everybody else a vision. And no matter how much we care about other people or we want the best for them, God gave that person a vision. And I'm saying that for myself because there are times my friends can come to me with ideas and especially because I'm so business minded, I want to like diary of the mouth and give them all these ideas, right? To make that happen. But I have to... I have to one, make sure that they're receptive or they want feedback, first of all. And two, making sure the feedback I'm giving is not from a place of my own experience and biasness, and I'm actually giving them feedback for things that are gonna benefit them. And we, can, we don't always have the objectivity to be able to do that, and that's just the honest truth. We don't. So really, I encourage everybody to guard their ideas like i've i've had it happen to me where i've been so excited about an idea and shared it and before i could even get the foundation laid for what i wanted to do and everybody already had an opinion about it some good some bad and it 
whether we could be the strongest person in the world, but those opinions do start to weigh on you. And whether you're not, you may not consciously be allowing them to weigh on you, subconsciously, those people's fears, their projections are in the back of your mind. And before you know it, you are 100% all in to this idea. And now because Joe Schmo said it won't work or you, they said you should do it another way, now you're not excited. Or now you're adding other people's ideas into yours and it's murky. And you're not doing it how you wanted to do it. And it's not organic and it's not true to you. So something you can do to counteract that is I'm instilling something personally for myself that I, before I share an idea, or even if there's something that I'm sharing that I want feedback on, I'm giving myself 24 hours before I tell somebody, period. I am letting it sit, I'm letting it marinate, I'm not sharing it with anybody because I want to formulate an opinion for myself on how I feel about something before I go ask someone else. And also, especially when it comes to getting advice, we are equipped with the knowledge to make good decisions for ourselves. But because we rely so much on our friends, our family, social media, we want to go out and quickly get validation or confirmation from others versus letting that idea or that thought sit with us for 24 hours and then letting the answer come to us or letting the foundation be built before we go bring it to other people. And it's human nature, but it's a lesson that I've learned where I am definitely more guarded about things going on in my life, sharing ideas, going to people for advice until I have given it 24 hours to sit within myself before I go let the world have it, so to speak. And so something I'm doing is when I'm writing down my ideas, I journal, but I didn't have a journal for ideas. I had a journal more so like to vent and clear my head. But now I have a planner or a journal where I'm writing out ideas, even if it's not clearly organized, even if it's like my idea is to go skydive. Putting it in there so it's on paper. I'm making it more concrete. Things that we put on paper become more of a reality than ideas in our head. Two, anytime that I'm tempted to call a friend or a loved one and let them know good news, let them let me hash something out with them that I need advice on or letting them know an idea I have, I write it down or I voice note myself. I say voice memos when I have ideas and I flesh those out. And then later it may come up in conversation. And it's like, oh yeah, by the way, a couple days ago I did this. Or a week ago I had this idea and I just wanted to share it with you as an accountability partner. But with all that being said, I definitely think it's important to just be mindful, especially on the internet. Like there's so many things that people share and I've been guilty of it as well. It should never be on the internet. Especially if you are African-American, they are reading our tweets, they are taking those ideas and we'll pop up in three months and be like, oh my God, I can't believe they created this business idea. Well, yeah, because you tweeted that you wanted to create a whole fashion line featuring X, Y, and Z for the internet to see and you didn't have anything branded, you didn't have anything trademarked and people are crazy on the internet. People are literally crazy, they're deranged. So if you really care about something, Keep it from the internet until it is set in stone. And if you really care about something, keep it close to the chest, except maybe to some close friends and loved ones that you can really trust to be unbiased and not project their fears or not wish ill on you. Keep it to yourself for a couple of days. Keep it to yourself for a week till you have it fleshed out. Whatever you do, definitely don't put on the internet. Definitely. Definitely don't put on the internet. Definitely give things time to just build momentum. Momentum is really good. Um, if you are interested in learning more about that, I suggest Googling Abraham Hicks and typing in momentum. Momentum is like domino effect. So when we have the domino effect of something good, we can continue to do things that further that domino effect. If we have a domino effect of something bad, that momentum, if we keep feeding it, will continue to have a domino effect in the negative direction. So just be mindful, be guarded, and, and that's with everybody. Honestly, be guarded with everybody because we're all human and when people tell us stuff, it's in our nature to quickly wanna give advice, give suggestions, give feedback, 
and that can really deter somebody and my encouragement on the opposite end when our friends come to us with their life their situations their ideas ask them what kind of feedback they're looking for if anything before spewing our own ideas out to them because sometimes people don't want to hear all that they just don't people just want you to listen and come back later with feedback if they ask for it so i hope this was helpful i hope this was kind of a reminder or encouraging people to just really be guarded with your thoughts and trust your intuition. I think sometimes we share things with others because we don't trust ourselves enough and our ideas enough and we don't have confidence enough to feel like what we're thinking or feeling is true. So we go to others and seek, um, we seek that confirmation. And all we need is the confirmation within ourselves and trusting whatever divine creator you believe in, whether that's God, the universe, or anything else you subscribe to, Trusting that we have the answers within us if we would just quiet out the noise. So hopefully this is a reminder from somebody to, while you're getting it out the mud and you're focusing on your goals, it's okay to keep some of those goals to your chest, to your chest and close to the vest, close to the vest to your chest, whatever they say. Keep them close to the vest in your chest until they come to fruition so that nobody can deter you and throw you off your path. So again, I am Sheridan LeBay. I've enjoyed this real casual chat that we've had today. Semi-business related, somewhat life related. Just focusing on your goals, guarding your goals, be mindful of your goals until you get to where you wanna be. So until next time, thank you for tuning in. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, or things you wanna see discussed, email me at hello at houseofuntamed.co, not com, but co or visit SheridanLebay.com for more information. And until next time, 